it's about a week or so later. Um, <clears throat> I have the new boring bar uh, with uh, our new inserts in. There's an ISCAR WNMG insert. Uh, it was really hard to find these inserts. I ordered other WNMG inserts, but they were too big. Um, so it's a trigonal pattern and it inscribes a circle. So uh, the only sizes I could find was a half inch inscribed circle. <clears throat> and these are, this is a 3 8 inch inscribed circle. Not even McMaster car had them. I finally found them on eBay and I got enough to hopefully last me a while. So let's see how this performs compared to all the other stuff. Couple thousand. Oops. Going the wrong way. All right. Let's see where we're at. So we've got about 28,000s left. So I have just enough boring bars stick out that I need, and I'm eating just enough. And you always want to do that because the more the boring bar sticks out, the less rigid it is, and the more chatter you get. This will affect your surface finish and your accuracy. So, I haven't gotten any chatter since I got past that steam port. I'm hitting the other steam port now, which means I got past the whole center with no chatter. The only chatter is in the beginning where it doesn't matter. So, I think this will be the last, last pass for sure. And I'm not going to worry about the chatter in the front. Man, that chatter is bad in the front. But it really doesn't matter. But it just looks so bad. I want to see if you can see that. You can see those chatter marks. But the place where the actual piston goes is fine. This section doesn't mean anything. I don't need this to have a piston seal like I do on the actual main bore of the engine. So I'm going to take a measurement past the steam port and see what kind of um kind of reading we ended up at <sighs> otherwise the finish inside looks really nice it's just that one chatter spot well we're about two under which is actually perfect because uh I want to hone this to get it the right size, let's just double check. Yeah, okay. Um, so, we got a little chatter marks in the front, but that kind of sucks, but that's just the way it's going to be, I guess. We're done with the machining. We did the indexing, the boring. The only thing we have to do, oh, and the facing, the only thing we have to do is flip this over, indicate it back. Um, into being true and then uh, do the uh, indexing for the other side. So let's do that. This side looks way better. Let's uh, clean off uh, I've, since I've been doing, so cast iron has this dust as chips, and the dust can be really uh, damaging to the bedways. Uh, so after each cut, I've actually been brushing off the the, the ways. So put this 
in. Alright. Let me get a soft hammer to hit that back with. I want to use a soft hammer because this is a machine surface. Okay, set up the uh, indicator. Let's uh. So we're going to indicate this in. Let's see where we're at now. I really need a better indicator for this. This isn't the best quality. So there's a high. Loosen that. Tighten this up. Okay, I think I got it close enough. Now we're gonna index the holes in the same way I did last time. Um, so I'm not gonna show that because it's the exact same process. Okay, I just finished indexing these bolt uh, this bolt hole pattern. So we can we can safely uh, take this out now. Alrighty, uh, <clears throat> now it's time to start the honing process. So I just took some base measurements here with my telescope and gauge. Took a bore size here, which was this was the side that was towards the chuck when we were machining. And then I took a bore size down here. Uh, this bore size is pretty much right on the money. And the bore size down here is out by about two to three thou. So uh, we're going to spend pretty much most of our time not on this area else we're gonna spend it mostly down bottom okay so uh, you get yourself a cylinder honing tool this is a two inch cylinder honing tool and we're gonna use a lot of lubricant and for lubricant I like to use um, WD-40 I'm also gonna spray the cylinder bore You know what, let me get a pan to catch all this oil. Let's start. Okay, so we got to sort of get a baseline for how much material this removes. So let's wipe off all the gunk. Now that's making a nice finish already. First, we'll check up here, which we knew was pretty much two inches on the money. Okay, that's uh. Still about two inches on the money. So let's check down here now. So we really haven't moved at all. So let's do this again. Relube.
Okay, just finished honing it. And you can see the finish is way better. You got that, you see that crosshatch pattern? The camera is really picking it up. I can't see it that well in real life. But, really nice finish. It is dead nuts on two inches the entire way down. It might be a few tenths off of variation. But otherwise, it's perfect. So next step, um, it's either going to be honing, or not honing, it's either going to be lapping it or drilling and tapping all the bolt holes. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to lap the ceiling surfaces. Now what lapping is, is um, basically you get a perfectly, you get a master flat surface and you use that surface the trans basically basically you're transferring the flatness from the master to whatever work you're working on now ideally the master surface is a granite plate um, that's been certified to be uh, <laughs> certified for flatness that's the best you're gonna get now I don't have a granite plate and a good substitute is just a piece of glass this is a very flat surface this will suffice for uh, our purposes um, so we're going to use this piece of glass as our master surface and um, for those wondering this this crap right here is on the other side of the glass this this side is fine so what I got here I just got some spray adhesive and we're going to spray this glass with the adhesive Just a little bit, then we're going to put the sandpaper on. There we go. Now, <laughs> that's going to be held stationary while we lap our, our part. Now the side we're going to lap first is this side with the steam ports. That fly cutter that I made has a, you know, it's okay surface, but that's not going to do for uh, sealing of steam. So what we need to do is we need to lap that and make it perfectly smooth, kind of like the bore inside. So when I lap, I like to wet the sandpaper. Uh, that just, I think, helps it stop from clogging as much. So I'm just going to use some WD-40. We're going to wet this. And then we're going to take our part. Put it on the sandpaper. This is, uh, we're starting with 150 grit. So. Damn. I have to hold down the glass plate. <laughs> Let's just use my desk, or my bench. Let's try that. Uh. Problem is this part is so heavy. So we'll just do that. So what I'm doing... Hey, the adhesive is starting to work. So what I'm doing... You want to make sure you don't, when you're pushing, you don't tilt the part and get the corners. You want to keep it as flat as possible. This part is pretty heavy, so I'm not even pushing down. I'm just letting it, its own weight do the work. A good thing to do when you're lapping is go in a figure eight pattern. But again, this, this setup I have is not really the best. Um, so I'm just going to stay in these linear patterns. So you don't want that chatter. And what another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be spinning this. Uh, you want the motion of the sandpaper across the surface to be uh, the same over all points on the surface. And when you spin it, the the surfaces towards the outside of the part are going faster than the surfaces towards the middle and are therefore getting abraded more so you want you want linear motion let's see what this looks like it's 
So if you look, let's see if you can see that. We're starting to get rid of the machining marks. You see that? And it's becoming more of a smooth surface. So you, we're going to use our this roughest sandpaper to just get rid of all this, all these machining marks and make it as smooth as we can. And then after that point, we're going to go gradually step up in grit so that um, uh, we, can make, we can make this a really nice polished surface. So I'm going to keep going until um, all these machining marks are out and I'll bring you back then. So this piece of sandpaper has worn compared to a new one. So I'm just going to peel this off. And we're going to put a new one on. Just like that. I just put a a piece of wood down. Um, <laughs> my bench isn't the flattest thing um, and you know I got a pretty big part I was worried about the glass kind of flexing over bumps in the table so this kind of averages things out a little bit more so this is a new piece of paper we'll just soak it not soak it we'll spray it with oil and then we'll keep going you can see we're we're getting there keep going Alrighty, uh, I went through four of these papers, and maybe it's about an hour later, and we have this surface finish. Pretty nice, if I can center it. Very nice surface finish. Um, next, we're going to, uh, I mean, this is pretty smooth. However, I'm just going to step it up in the grit size and see if it changes the, the finish significantly. Um, if it doesn't, I'll just stop. Um, and if it does, I'll keep going until I get to 400. That's what I have over here, over there. That, so that was 150. I'll bring you guys back when I'm uh, done. Alrighty, I just finished going up to 400, and we got a really, really nice surface finish there really happy with that so next uh, we have to lap the top and the bottom although I might drill the holes first um, I might do the holes all the holes at once uh, and then after that that's that's it just the, the, the holes and the lapping and we'll be good to go